Okay, so hi everybody. I uh, want to thank uh, sponsoring committees 364, 222, AOE as well. I want to thank, thank you for you. taking the time to uh, sp spend the time with us today. So, okay, we got, um, I'm presenting today uh, on behalf as well of Jacques. Um, we worked together on this project a few years back and uh, it's pretty interesting. Uh, we titled it a novel, uh, a novel coupled approach to evaluate and extend the service life of an existing structure. So let's see how this goes. Uh, right, so contents. Um, I, I am going to try to make this condensed and as straightforward as possible. There is an interesting problem definition that, will, that might interest you. Uh, we are going to describe the approach that we use to answer this, this question, the questions that this problem provided. Uh, and you'll see what the coupled analysis means down there. And there are interesting conclusions. So some background, we, uh, we were investigating a tunnel structure uh, that was constructed 50 years ago. It's a reinforced concrete tunnel uh, and it has about a hundred, it was construction, constructed in about a hundred sections, give or take 30 feet of length each. It is exposed on the outside to a saltwater solution, uh, a seawater basically about 35 PPT. The interior is not exposed to any contaminants. The interior condition from what we can see is that it's in very good condition. There are no, there's no evidence of any structural distress. The objective uh, that our client uh, set out was the, they wanted to know how long does this structure have left? Uh, so do we do nothing? Do we repair? Do we strengthen? Um, if we do repair or strengthen, where should we do it? If is, do we, should we monitor uh, for those who are familiar with tunnel, uh, tunnel, jobs, um, existing tunnel jobs, we, there one, there's one question where you're, you're wondering, should we monitor the whole tunnel? Are there areas that are more interesting? So uh, that was, those were the initial questions that our client had. So the problem definition was that we have a, a tunnel that is visually in very good condition. There's no evidence of any structural distress. There are no significant leak, uh, leaks, uh, which is pretty surprising. Um, they are for the very small volume is collected and redirected out via pump stations. The, what we know is that the exterior walls, rafts, ceilings, the surfaces, basically the exterior envelope of the tunnel is exposed to seawater. The questions that we can, that we could not answer from the document review was, is the waterproofing in good condition? And is there any evidence that would indicate that the exterior steel reinforcement is in good condition? There was a previous study, which I'll get to shortly, which investigated that uh, with an excavation, but that was the only information on the exterior reinforcement that was available. The, the point is that the investigation methods to for tunnels on the outside are very limited and they're very expensive. So there's really not much you can do except excavate. And uh, that's very costly. There's uh, water management, uh, well pumps and all that fun stuff. So, um, and you can't really do it for the entire length of the tunnel. Uh, it's just uh, very costly. So this is a, a typical cross section of, a, of the tunnel. This is a wall. Uh, on, on the left, you have in blue, the seawater uh, where it's, it, it basically is exposed um, the exterior surface is exposed to seawater. There should be a, a two, two layer by two theme waterproofing system on the exterior. And there's some bricks outside as well. On the inside, there is an airtight epoxy coating. Inside the, the steel, the, the con reinforced concrete section is basically like a meter thick, massive concrete section with uh, a variable steel reinforcement density. The only remark that I want to point out here is that the exterior and the interior mats are electrically connected with these, uh, these hoops, um, and that's well detailed in, in the plans. So the approach that we defined with the client was first, let's confirm, let's look at what's the degradation phenomena, let's identify it, let's perform a first structural analysis of the entire tunnel, uh, using uh, the original as-builts and uh, using the original design hypotheses, loading, et cetera. Let's identify the critical, se critical sections using that. Then um, while the we're doing that with one structural team with the, we'll call it the durability team, uh, let's establish a rate of deterioration at these critical sections. Um, 
uh, again, along the entire length. And then we perform a second structural analysis on these critical sections, which consider the rate of deterioration or the rate of, we'll see later, the rate of corrosion. In the end, we want to develop uh, the, the approach that we proposed was we would develop an optimized intervention plan uh, that would not mean monitoring the whole tunnel, repairing the whole tunnel, or doing anything on the whole tunnel, uh, because that would be very expensive. We, there were some questions on consolidation and potentially some, some uh, shear cracking in some areas. So we performed uh, tomography testing uh, at selected areas to determine if whether or not there was any signs of distress that we could not see visually from the interior surface. So uh, uh, again, to remind, we cannot go on the exterior surface uh, because it is below water and or below ground. Uh, so we, this is probably one of the only means that is cost effective to do some sort of imaging. Uh, the results are, I've, we found that it, it was pretty interesting, but it is, uh, it takes a lot of time to do uh, the surveys. For field testing, there was a study that was done uh, by actually by IAD's team uh, just before um, where they investigated with a little excavation, uh, an area that is under the water line and they wanted to see uh, first is the waterproofing in, in what's the condition of the waterproofing and do we see any evidence of uh, corrosion or any deterioration? So uh, the main takeaway is that uh, you'll see on the left here, the steel from the few, we were, they were able to do two openings there. The steel is in good condition. Um, there were, however, some hot spots that were detected with half cell, half cell surveys. And the, they took out some cores and the chloride profiles that they got from those cores was, not, was a non-zero profile, meaning there was a, a shape that indicated that the waterproofing was no longer effective. So this raises the question of where along the tunnel is the waterproofing no longer effective? And unfortunately, there's not a straight away, there's not a straight answer that we can give. It potentially, if, we, if on this limited section, we were able to confirm that the waterproofing is not effective and that there is a chloride contamination on the exterior face, um, it raises the question. So uh, this is, was on the outside, a very small part. On the inside, we were able to do some, some half cell surveys uh, at different areas. Now, we wanted to get as close as possible to the exterior steel, um, but for safety reasons, we couldn't necessarily drill very deep. Uh, we didn't want to risk puncturing the tunnel and having this incredible pressure of water coming in. So we went about halfway and tried to get as close as possible to the back, what we call the back steel. And um, we did half cell surveys that way. We did it at, at the surface and about halfway. So uh, we did the, that on a two by four grid and uh, we did deep half cell at about a half meter grid. Now, while that was going on, we had, uh, we collected some core samples. Uh, we wanted to update some information and complete the information that was available in the documents. So from our testing, uh, there's nothing really, uh, nothing bad going with the concrete. Excuse me, fortunately, um, yeah, so it's an ordinary Portland cement concrete produced at about 0.5 water cement ratio. The compressive strength varied pretty significantly from one area of the tunnel to another, but it was overall 20 MPA and over. The uh, resistance, right, so poor resistance to chloride ingress that was indicated through um, uh, different tests, but primarily uh, through uh, migration testing. We also performed electrical resistivity testing and the, uh, the results showed that it was very low. Um, and fortunately, no ASR or delayed itronide formation. So those are the, that, on, that ends it on a good note. Uh, a few fun pictures for those who like to see core samples. Uh, the interesting thing is um, also a very limited or negligible carbonation. The, so with, uh, we were able to, like I said, do some deep quote unquote half cell potential measurements. And we calculated um, what we should have, what we should receive in terms of half cell results if there was an anode on the outside in saturated conditions. 
Um, and so we perform the calculations on one side with one team in, in, the, in the office and the other team on site was performing measurements. And when we compared the results, we were pretty much smack, uh, they, they were pretty much in the same, um, the same range. Um, so I would draw your attention to this, the column uh, about center and a, uh, center left and center. So the center left is what our calculations indicated that we should get in terms of half cell potential results at the midsection of the wall, close to the exterior, uh, the, uh, the back steel that is facing the seawater. And if there was no anode um, on the exterior steel, meaning if there if there had not been any corrosion initi initiation, we should have gotten uh, much uh, much less negative results. Uh, this is silver chloride for uh, reference electrode. The the other point I wanted to show is the um, required such uh, re relative humidity inside the concrete at the steel reinforcement that is inside the um, the basically the steel that we are going to hit first from the inside it, we should uh, our calculations show that it should be very near saturation that's because of the of that coating on the inside that keeps it pretty much saturated uh so what we measured was uh, uh, low to high 90s um in terms of relative humidity so we so this is interesting now i think we're going to get, I'm going to get a lot of questions. And initially my position personally on corrosion was, I believe that uh, corrosion in submerged conditions was, uh, if it happened, it was extremely localized and it could be explained by fluke phenomena. Um, in, so we did a study in, uh, in a marine, on a marine structure in Northern uh, European Union. And uh, we performed, uh, we, we sent divers to, to try to determine if they could locate uh, corrosion uh, anodes below the, the low water line, below the tidal zone. And uh, they, they did a f a quite a few breakout windows along cracks um, in sound, visually sound concrete. And they, they hit one area, one breakout that was not on a crack it was just kind of a fluke. They said, uh, we did half cell and maybe something going on here, but we're not sure. And they, 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 they tore out the concrete and uh, we, they found a, a, a textbook little anode there. And it is about 70 millimeters long on, along the, uh, the steel. And if you measure the thinnest section, it is about 50% uh, uh, corroded in terms of thickness, uh, diameter. So if you, uh, you, uh, there is a researcher in University of South Florida, for those who are interested in, in, in reading more about this, uh, Mr. Sagues, and he does a lot of research into that. And in the 60s, 60s, uh, 60s 70s, he, um, he, tore, he took out piles from, in Florida from uh, seawater, and he pretty much very quickly removed all the concrete to determine if there was corrosion, and there was. So further reading. So overall, uh, what's the condition of the tunnel? Uh, the concrete is, is is variable, but in good condition. The leading deterioration phenomenon is steel reinforcement corrosion. There's no ASR. There's no internal degradation phenomenon. There's no significant carbonation, uh, et cetera. Um, so the main degradation phenomena that we could find was the exterior contamination, uh, uh, the, the contamination, the chloride contamination from the exterior uh, that's caused by seawater exposure. We have not been able to uh, observe this corrosion, but it is suspected based on experimental evidence. And also the fact that we, we, we tested at a very local area on the outside and we were able to find it right there. So multiply that by the uh, thousand, the kilometer length multiplied by all the surfaces, the surfaces of the roof, of the walls, of the raft, um, it is a non-zero probability. So uh, that's, that's, that was basically our understanding. Um, it is not possible to say where it is, but it is likely happening. And the conservative approach is to consider that, it, that corrosion is occurring in uh, the sections, the weak sections, quote unquote, of the tunnel, the critical sections. Uh, I also, we also determined that we must assume that the chloride exposure began of, at year of construction because there was no way for us to determine if the exterior membranes were, remember the two bithuthene layers, were effective at year zero. 
when they uh, at when they, they they basically submerge the tunnel. The, for those who are interested, the durability durability analysis uh, that we call it that way it was done with stadium and comsol multiphysics. Um, I did have a one little note. We so we inserted part of the code of stadium into comsol to uh, for saturation profiles and um, but otherwise uh, it was it was uh, it was a two prong approach and propagation. The structural analysis, it was done in three stages. Um, we, we used uh, Katia, then SAP2000, and then Plexus. And this was done uh, for, like I said, the as-built, not corroded, and then a corroded uh, scenario. This took a very long time. But in the end, we were able to narrow down from 100 sections, uh, the 100 sections, 30 feet length, narrow them, them down to 13 critical sections. And out of these, we, we determined that four were at risk of inelastic behavior in the next 50 years. Then we uh, recommended um, out of, we looked at different intervention options and pretty much the only one that's, that was reliable was uh, local impressed current cathodic protection. And uh, the good news is that it doesn't need to be installed right now. It can be installed uh, progressively in the coming years. So the idea is that you can install them right now on the on four the four most critical sections, and then uh, if you wanted to, if you wanted to extend the service life of the tunnel to uh, more than 50 years, then uh, you could uh, install it on the remaining nine critical sections. So thank you. Thanks again to sponsoring committees 364, 222. Uh, thanks Vincent. Thanks Bryce and Carol. Um, if you have any questions chat. Otherwise, send me an email, ppower at simcotechnologies.com. Thank you.